This video is a little bit different than other ones that I have done in the past where I talk mostly about tactical tips on knowledge management and zettelkasten. In this video, I would like to critique a very popular book and framework called Second Brain and what you might want to know if you are serious about knowledge management or organizing information in general. But before we dive in, I would like to make two very important points. Firstly, I love Tiago Forte and his work very much. Since I discovered the Second Brain and Para framework about three years ago, I've used them to organize my digital life and also it made my system much more efficient. Also, the content on Tiago's blog and YouTube channel about productivity, such as how to organize tasks on Things Tree or how to process emails efficiently has been very helpful to me as well. So even though this video is a critique of Tiago's work, it doesn't mean that I don't like his work or it means that Second Brain and Para frameworks are bad in any way, but I just have some thoughts that would make them much more powerful. The second point that I would like to make is that even though I don't think the second brain framework is 100% perfect for organizing all kinds of information, I think it would be better for you to implement the second brain framework instead of doing nothing at all. So with those caveats out of the way, let's dive in. Okay, so first of all, what is a second brain? Basically, a second brain is the name of the methodology to help you organize information. At the heart of the second brain methodology is the code method, capture, organize, distill, and express. So you capture the external information in your second brain, then you organize using the para method, which I'm gonna talk about in a minute. Once you organize the information, you're gonna distill to the essence. In the end, you're gonna express the information through your work. As I mentioned before, the second brain methodology suggests that you organize the information based on the para method, projects, areas, resources and archives. So once you capture the information, you have to ask yourself which projects, areas or resources this belongs to. And as time goes on, you manage your information and you want to put it away, you're going to put them in the archives. I'm not going to talk too much in detail about the second brain methodology, but you can check out the resources I'm going to link here below and also the book summary from short form. Short form is my current choice for book summary. It is really awesome because it has so much detail and insights. If you would like to give short form a try, you can use the code down below to get some discount. While the second brain framework is a wonderful methodology, I believe that it misses one thing, which is the distinction between the action and growth information. Let me explain. Overall, in your life, there are two kinds of information that you need to manage, which are the action-oriented information and growth-oriented information. Action-oriented information is the information that you need to help perform specific actions. These are things like receipts, documents to file, inspiration, artwork for upcoming presentation, the plan for your upcoming trips, or anything that you need that are specific to actions. These would be considered action action-oriented information. Organizing these kinds of information is like putting things in boxes. You need to put the right things in the right boxes so that when you need it, it is very easy to find. For the action-oriented information, I think the second brain methodology is absolutely perfect for this. Besides the action-oriented information, there is also another kind of information, which is the growth information. Growth information is like planting seeds in the soil so that one day they grow into fruitful trees or maybe they just die. This kind of information needs to be built up over time so that you gain knowledge, insights, and it becomes richer and richer over time. This kind of information are things like books, podcasts, classes, or anything that involves reflecting to gain knowledge or insights. For managing the growth information, I don't think the second brain methodology is really suited for this. And you will see the examples later in the video. So that's why I developed another framework called productive thinking for managing the growth related information. This is heavily based on the zero cast and methodology but adapted for the modern use cases. At the heart of the productive thinking process is the four C's framework, which includes capture, crystallize, connect, and create. The capturing is very similar to the second brain methodology, but what sets apart the productive thinking methodology from the second brain is the crystallized step. So once you capture information in raw formats, you have to crystallize to the essence so that you can connect this information to other information. 
And in the end, you're gonna create something out of this knowledge or wisdom. Once again, I don't want to go too deep in detail about the productive thinking framework, but you can use these links and resources to learn more. By the way, the app that I'm using to explain these concepts to you is Squinto, who is a sponsor of this video. Squinto is really perfect for the productive thinking framework and also for managing growth-related information in general. I really love Squinto because of the simple setup. It is extremely easy to use. You can collaborate and share the information very easily on the internet using the link. If you want to try out Scrinto, you can use the code down below to get some discount. Thank you, Scrinto, for sponsoring this video. To illustrate the concept of the growth information and also to explain to you regarding the second brain and also the productive thinking framework, I would like to give you an example. Let's say I would like to summarize one of my favorite books, The Almanac of Neville Ravikant. First, I would use the second brain framework and show you how it would work. To use the second brain methodology, the first step is to capture the book notes. Maybe you can use the Readwise integration to import the highlights into your your digital notes app, or you can do the classic way using the pens and paper. Whichever way you use, the capturing step is about getting the information regarding the book and put it into your system. Once you capture the information, here comes the second step, the organize step. You have to organize the information using the para method. However, there is a problem because this book talks about so many different topics, about philosophy, business, startup, innovation, finance. The question becomes which project area or resources this would belong to. Maybe I'll choose something like self-development, or maybe if I use a really advanced note-taking app, I can use a hashtag to organize this book. The third step is distilling. So distill is about summarizing the book to the core. So you can use the progressive summarization technique mentioned in the Building a Second Brain book, or maybe you can just write up a book summary yourself. Now you have one note that has all the information regarding the book at the bottom and maybe the summarization of the book at the top. And the final step is express. So once you have this wonderful book note, you can use this as a reference when you take actions. There is nothing wrong with using the second brain method to summarize a book or the growth information. However, as you can see in the organization step, it's really hard to organize these information into the right project or areas. And also when you express or take action, you would have to see so many unrelated information. For example, you want to see only the learnings about business. You have to go through the unrelated information regarding the philosophy, how to live a good life. While using the second brain method is okay, it is not very ideal for the growth related information. Now let's take a look how you would summarize the book using the productive thinking framework. So the first step is capturing information or the reference notes. This is pretty much the same as what you would do in the second brain framework. But the key difference comes in the second step, which is crystallizing. Crystallization is about producing your insights and ideas that you have learned from the book. You have to write these in your own words, not only highlighting or copy and paste, but this is your thoughts summarizing in your own words. Once you crystallize the insights or ideas, you have to connect them to the hub note, which is a high level idea, or to other permanent notes, which is other thoughts or ideas. For example, I have produced to permanent notes regarding leverage and I have connect one of them to another permanent note and another of them to a hub note, which is the high level idea about having a leverage. As you can see, once I connect these notes to other notes, it starts to form a cluster of information. And the beautiful thing about the productive thinking system is that you separate the polished idea or your clean insights from the source. So you don't mix the raw information with the polished information, but you can also see where this polished information comes from. So as I mentioned before, the growth information is like growing trees. So as you can see, these notes start to form a cluster growing into beautiful trees. But on the other hand, the growth information doesn't always grow into trees. For example, from this book, I produced two notes regarding financial freedom. And since then, I have no other notes connected to them. So you can say that these seeds of information are starting to die out, or maybe they are just waiting to be connected and grow into new trees. So as you can see, productive thinking framework is more suited for the growth information because you can see the information in the purest form. Also, you can connect it to other related information. 
And because I use Grinto for this, so unlike Obsidian that has similar feature, which is Obsidian Canvas, these connection are real connection, not only temporary connection in the canvas. So these are the differences between using the second brain framework and the productive thinking system to summarize the growth information. So as I mentioned earlier in the video, this doesn't mean that the second brain framework is bad. I'm just saying that it is not ideal for the growth related information. And to be honest, if you are not managing your growth information at all, using the second brain framework is absolutely gonna be much better than doing nothing. I hope today you learned something and I'm gonna leave the link to this Grinto board in the description. If you have any thoughts or comments that you would like to make about this video, please feel free to leave down in the comment section below. I would love to hear your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.